We only have 24 hours every single day. The life that you have and the life that you will create is dependent upon what you do in that time. You can go from no energy to holy sh I have so much energy like that. If you hit the snooze, you're automatically starting your day off with a loss. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to have more energy and also why you happen to be so tired all the time. And the reason why this is important is because energy should be one of the most important things that you think about every single day. How much energy you have, because we only have 24 hours every single day. You have 24 hours, I have 24 hours, everybody has 24 hours. The life that you have and the life that you will create is dependent upon what you do in that time. But if you don't have energy, it's like living your life like you're driving a, you know, an 18 wheeler. Have you ever seen an 18 wheeler try to get going? It takes a while, it takes a while, it takes a while. When in reality, if you plan, a plan, a plan and pay attention to your energy throughout the day, you can get your body to move like a Ferrari. So if I were to say, hey, life is a race, would you like an 18 wheeler or would you like a Ferrari? You're probably gonna pick the Ferrari, right? Why? Because it goes faster. So let's talk about, I'm gonna give you four key topics we're gonna dive into pretty in depth today, as far as energy goes, as to why most people are tired, but then also if you pay attention to these and really plan them out, these will all help you have more energy throughout the day. So four key factors. Number one, obviously, is going to be sleep. So let's dive into sleep. Uh, we're going to talk about ways to sleep better. And we're also going to talk about how to stay awake better as well. So first thing that you want to think about when you wake up in the morning, some, some of you wake up when the sun is already up. Some of you guys wake up after the, before the sun is up. Some of you guys wake up after the sun is up. And the first thing that you want to do is when the sun comes out in the morning, you want to try to get sun on your skin and you want to get it on as much of your skin as possible. So if you happen to live, you've got nowhere near you, get butt ass naked, go outside, get some, get some sunlight, make sure the kids aren't around on your body. The more that you can get on you, the better. Don't get a sunburn or anything like that. If you live in downtown Miami, but the sun comes up and it hits you on your balcony, don't get butt naked on your balcony and then blame it on me. You know, go out there in your bathing suit, get some sun on your skin. There's a couple reasons why this is important. Number one, the sun on your skin tells your brain to stop making melatonin. And I'm going to give you another tip on that as well. And number two, it sets your circadian cycle, which is the sleep cycle that you have. So you want to get out and actually get the sun on your skin for just a few minutes. It doesn't have to be anything too long. The second thing that you want to do while you're out there as well, you may have heard me talk about this before, is to go and actually look at the blue in the sky. So you don't want to look at the sun itself. You want to look at the blue. The receptors in your eye, when they see that blue, what they do is they stop making melatonin as well. Now, let me give you a secret. Uh, for those of you guys that are out there and you have SAD, which is uh, seasonal effectiveness disorder, which I found that I have, when it's gloomy for a while, you notice, like I can usually tell what the weather is when I wake up um, before, because if I feel like I'm dragging ass and it's hard for me to get out of bed, there's a pretty good chance, uh, like it is today in Austin right now. It's kind of rainy. It's not the, the most beautiful day. But if I jump out of bed and it's easier for me to get out of bed, usually there's not a cloud in the sky. So some people are affected by, this, the, by the clouds. Some people aren't. It depends on who you are. There's a thing called the Philips Blue Light, and there's other companies that make these as well, but I know the one that I have is called the Philips Blue Light. And what you want to do is if you notice, if you live in a place with some really long winters or doesn't get a whole lot of sun, what you do is you take this thing, you actually put it in the corner. You don't look directly at it, but if you're going to sit there and work on your computer, you put it off to the side and your eyes will start to actually see that blue, which tells the melatonin to stop being made in your brain, which then allows you to wake up and have more energy. Um, so another thing you wanna do when you talk about the blue is you want to try to, when the sun starts to set, you wanna to try to remove as much blue from your environment as possible. So the first thing that you gotta think about is your phone. Your phone has a whole hell of a lot of blue. There's something called night shift on iPhone, Samsung's, all the other phones, I don't, Androids, I don't know what they're called. But night shift, when the sun starts to set, it starts to take the blue and turn it more into red. Why is this important? Well, the same reason why blue makes you wake up in the morning is the same reason why blue makes you stay awake in the evening. So you want to start removing blue from your environment. Another thing that you need to do, you need to start thinking about your computer. If you have a MacBook, I have a MacBook. There's something that's free. It's called Flux, F-L dot, what is it? F dot L-U-X. 
flux, same exact thing as night shift, is when it is the sun starts to set, it knows where you are in the world, it will actually start to change the blues in your screen to red, which then allows you, it makes it easier to fall asleep. Um, this is the reason why you see so many people wearing blue blockers at night when they're starting to go to bed. It's because if you're watching TV, if you're walking around your house, these blue blockers, those glasses, tend to take the blue out of your, your vision, so it allows you to fall asleep better. Because most of the time, humans, 100,000 years ago, we're not staying up at 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. They were going to bed a little bit after the sun went down, right? So you, you have a, a couple different things. Number one, you have night shift on your phone. You have flux on your MacBook. You have blue blockers as well. Um, you want to try to get away from your phone. You want to try to get away from your TV uh, 30 minutes to an hour before you're going to go to bed. And here's one thing that I don't really hear many people talk about is you also want to stay away from overhead lights. So in my house, we have lights literally built into the ceiling, right? You want to try to stay away from those at night. And the reason why is because you actually have receptors on the bottom of your eyes that actually notice that there's light above your head, which your brain thinks is what? The sun. And so at night, you actually don't want to have overhead lighting on. You want to have lamps that are on the ground about eye level or lower that are actually producing light that you have at night. So what you're doing is you're tricking your brain into thinking, hey, you know, it's about time to go to bed so that you can fall asleep. You can get better REM sleep. You can get better deep sleep as well. Um, turn off the overhead lights. Get rid of all the blue as much as you possibly can. Next thing when we dive into sleep itself is make sure that your room is as black as you possibly can make it. Like if you can make it so you can't see your hand in front of your face at night, that's perfect. You want it to be that way. And the reason why is because you actually have photoreceptors on your skin and those photoreceptors are basically like little eyes. So even if your eyes are closed, your skin, the photoreceptors on your skin still know that there's light out there. So you want to try to make your room as dark as possible. Do not... I know there's some people out here. I'm going to, I'm going to disappoint you. You probably already know the answer to this anyways. You aren't, you know, you shouldn't be watching. You shouldn't have the freaking TV on when you go to bed. It's not good for you. Uh, number one, the photoreceptors in your eyes are still noticing that there's light inside of the room. So it's going to mess your sleep up. And as well, it's going to, <clears throat> you know, it's going to, um, as you're hearing it, it's going to keep your brain semi awake. Cause your brain, even when you're asleep is still listening the whole time that you're asleep. Like if you're asleep, deep sleep and you hear a loud bang in your house, it's going to wake you up. That's because your brain is still awake. So if you're listening to, if your brain is listening to the TV all night long, it's going to be keeping you out of REM sleep and out of deep sleep and not getting the sleep that you need to. Therefore, you're not going to have the energy that you need to. If you have to fall asleep with something on, get a fan, you know, get some white noise machine. Uh, my dog snores like crazy. He snores louder than the average human. Toby, 12 years old, snores louder than anybody I've ever met. I have to have a white noise machine or else I don't sleep when he's inside the room. So we have a white noise machine inside of our room, right? Next thing you think about as well, your bed, your bed, does it suck? One of the things that people don't invest enough money into is their bed. Reason why is because they're cheap. I don't know, but, but the reason why it's important is because of the fact that you spend one third of your life, right? The average person sleeps for eight hours a night. If you sleep for eight hours, that is one third of the 24 hours that you have in a day. Right? So one third of your life is spent on a bed. Make sure that you have a really good bed that gets you into REM sleep, that gets you into deep sleep. There's tons of different, you know, Apple watches now and um, beds that, that measure it. And aura, there's a thing called an aura ring, uh, uh, whoop, all of these things measure your sleep at night. And so you can measure them to actually see if you really want to get deep into it and see how you're sleeping and, and start to get down to it and get nerdy on it. You can get really nerdy on how well you're sleeping. So if you want to have more energy, the first thing you got to think about is how is your sleep, right? If you have no energy throughout the day, it might be because you're just not taking the right measures when you fall asleep, okay? That's the first thing I think about always with energy, obviously, is sleep. Second thing, obvious, diet. What are you eating throughout the day, right? Digestion is the most energy-consuming thing that your body does. There is nothing more that your body does that's more energy-consuming than digestion. So, if you're eating stuff that's very heavy, that's very greasy, that's very fatty, that's fast foods, you're not going to have energy. And the reason why is because your body is using the energy and shutting everything else down so that it can get this food out of your body. Because it's like, we gotta get this out, right? So what are you eating throughout the day? You know, if you're eating a heavy breakfast, if you're eating a heavy lunch, if it's greasy, if it's fast food, all these things that I said, it's gonna be slowing you down. Another thing to think about that a lot of people don't think about as well is have you done an allergy test to see if you have any food allergies? Because if you have food allergies, that's your body going, there's something that's an emergency. 
We've got to get it out and it's going to use as much energy as it can to get rid of whatever it is that you're allergic to. So what type of food are you eating? Normally, what ends up being the best for people, food that they eat throughout the day to try to give you the mo most energy. You know, you can do uh, leafy greens, light greens, maybe some chicken on top of it, whatever it is that works for you. Maybe some, you know, beans and corn on top of it, whatever it is that, that will give you energy. Everybody's body is different. So what gives me energy might take energy away from you and vice versa. So what does your energy look like throughout the day after you eat? When you have lunch, are you tired after lunch? That's something that you should eliminate from your diet if you're tired after lunch. So start paying attention to the things that make you tired, right? Um, normally what I like to have throughout the day, a shake. It's just easy. Gets down, easy to digest. I get a lot of nutrients from it. I'm good to go for throughout the rest of the day. Usually my biggest meal is at dinner. I just do that because I usually have a lot more energy throughout the day if I eat less. That's just the way it happens to be for me. And I had a, an interview that's coming out pretty soon with Dr. David Sinclair. Dr. David Sinclair is the head of aging at Harvard. And uh, we were talking about the whole thing and you know just the stuff that you eat throughout the day. And he s recommends you skip at least one meal per day. Number one, it'll make you live longer. And number two, it'll also give you a lot more energy, right? So if we're talking about diet as well, another thing to think about is caffeine. Uh-oh, I'm about to offend a whole lot of people. Here we go. In case you didn't know, the half-life of caffeine is seven hours. What does half-life mean? Half-life means it takes the half, if, if I have 100 milligrams of, ca uh, of caffeine, right? The half-life would be how long does it take for it to be half of the amount? So from 100 milligrams to 50 milligrams. What's crazy is that the half-life of caffeine is five to seven hours. So if you are a late caffeine drinker, so let's say I have a coffee at 4 p.m., that means at 11 o'clock at night, half of that caffeine is still in my body, right? So at 11 p.m., my 4 p.m. coffee, half of that is still in my body and hasn't gotten released yet. So you have to think it to yourself, if I wanna be able to sleep better, I should probably start paying attention to the caffeine that I have and the caffeine intake that I have. Once again, half-life of five to seven hours. So I recommend, and what I always say is, you know, one o'clock is probably the latest that you should have some form of caffeine. Uh, if you've been listening to my podcast long enough, you've heard me talk about it. I really don't drink a whole lot of coffee anymore, even though I love coffee. What I have switched to is yerba mate. The reason why I switched to yerba mate is because caffeine, the coffee caffeine, when you drink coffee, there's a massive spike in caffeine, and then you know the coffee drops. When you have a couple hours later, the co it just drops and your energy drops. So you might have a massive spike and a massive drop, and that's why you don't have energy throughout the day. If you do want to have caffeine, instead of having it in coffee, if you have it in something like yerba mate and some other types of tea, yerba mate, everybody always sends me a message and asks, Y-E-R-B-A space M-A-T-E. That's yerba mate. Uh, your, liver digests, your liver and your body digests it differently than coffee. And so instead of a massive spike and a massive drop, it's a massive spike. And then it takes about five hours for your body to drop that. So instead of having a massive drop, it's a lot easier of a drop. So something to think about, think about the caffeine when you're taking it, when you're not taking it. Um, and remember five to seven hour half-life is caffeine inside of your body. So last thing I think about as well, or sorry, the, the third thing I think about, second to last thing I think about uh, is exercise. The more that you exercise, even though it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, the more energy that you use inside of exercise, the more your body will actually start to make more energy. So if you start exercising a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, your body will start to make more energy every single day, right? So if you're somebody who's very tired throughout the day, you don't have a whole lot of energy. One of the questions I'm going to ask you is how much do you exercise? What kind of force do you put through your, your body through and what do you do throughout the day? Um, if you exercise more, your body's going to create more energy. Find out when your best time to create more energy is for you. So for me, working out 9 a.m., 10 a.m. is usually my favorite time to work out. I have the opportunity to do so because I have my own business and I work from home. It might be the same for you. It might not be the same for you. But when do you get the most energy to work out? When is your best time to work out? You should figure it out. Maybe it's six o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning for you. Maybe it's noon. Maybe it's 6 p.m. Find out when the best time is for you to make sure that you're staying consistent with your exercise. If you're tired throughout the day, there's a pretty good chance that you're not working out enough. And your body runs more efficiently whenever you start to work out as well. And it also helps you fall asleep and it also helps you sleep better, which in turn helps you get more energy as well. So think about your exercise, how much you're exercising. And the last thing I think about as far as why people are tired is your environment. Your environment will make you tired as well. Think about the people that you surround yourself with. 
do they give you energy? Do they strip energy away from you? If you're around them for a half an hour, do you feel more energized or do you feel like crap after you're done with them? Right? So what does your environment look like? Okay. Second thing, what does your job look like? If you hate your job, I promise you this, it is stealing energy and sucking energy out of you. It's also sucking your soul away. Probably if you hate your job, right? That's the way I felt when I hated my job is it was like just soul sucking to be, to be there when I was younger and I was at a job, right? So the job you have can be stealing your energy away from you. Maybe your coworkers at your job are stealing your energy away from you, right? Um, do you sit all day long? Think about that. Uh, one of the things that, that they recommend is getting up and going for a walk, even if it's three or four minutes every single hour, get your body moving. If you're not moving a lot throughout the day, your body's going to make less energy. So if you don't have a whole lot of energy throughout the day, are you sitting most of the day, right? Let's talk about how to make energy on demand real quick. One of the things that I've been doing a lot lately, I found it from one of my friends that we did it during a workout is this thing called ski breaths. And what you do is you breathe in through the nose and you breathe out through the mouth. But when you breathe in, you take your hands and a fist, you put them above your head. And when you breathe out, you breathe out and push down as if you're like a skier, right? So it's for those of you guys listening on the podcast, you don't know what the hell I'm doing. For those of you guys watching on video and you do it over, but you do it aggressively. Hands up, breath, breathe in through your nose, hands down, you breathe out through your mouth and you do it over and over and over again. Do that for a minute and two minutes. You're going to be out of breath. It'll make your heart go like crazy and it will wake you up. That is how you get your body to wake up, to force yourself to make more energy. So if you feel like you're, if you feel like it's three o'clock and you're dragging ass and you're not getting as much done, you still have a lot to do for the day, but you know, oh my gosh, I can't drink coffee because I won't fall asleep tonight. Force your body through movement and through breath to give you energy on demand. Your body is a beautiful thing. If you need energy, you can force your body to trick itself to create energy. If like, you know, if, we, if it was 100,000 years ago and you and I are really tired and we're walking through wherever the hell we live 100,000 years ago and uh, you and I are on a walk and a cheetah pops out of the bush and starts chasing us and we won't be like, oh, I'm too tired. You know, no, your body's gonna click in. It's gonna force itself to make energy. So how can you trick your body to exactly the same? One of the ways through these ski breaths Works so well. Breathe in through the nose, put your arms above your head, breathe out through your mouth, push them down as if you're skiing on, you know, snow. Um, get the heart rate up, move more. Next thing I think as well, as far as your environment goes, how do you talk to yourself in your head? Like, do you tell yourself you don't have energy? Because I promise you this, if you tell yourself, oh, I'm so tired. If you say you're tired to people, if you say it out loud all the time, if you say you're a tired person, say you didn't sleep well, all that stuff, you will feel more tired if you say you're tired. I promise you that. So start to think about that. Do you say how tired you are throughout the day? And then also, how do you talk to yourself in your head? Do you build yourself up or do you talk shitty to yourself? If you talk trash to yourself, if you're negative, if you have negative self-talk, I guarantee you that negative self-talk is going to make you feel worse about yourself. It's going to make you feel worse. And in turn, it's going to steal energy away from you. Today, we're going to be talking about the nine ways to naturally have more energy. I'm going to give you some that are going to be decently obvious, but I'm going to give you some tips around how to make them better. And I'm going to give you some that are just going to be something you probably never thought of before. So the first one as how to have more energy is to get some sleep. Now you might be like, well, no, sh well, let's dive deeper into sleep. Uh, sleep is obviously extremely important for your energy, but there's a couple hacks that you can definitely have. Number one, your room should be as dark as possible when you sleep. You should figure out how much sleep you need. For me, it's about seven and a half to eight hours. I can sleep for 13 hours straight if nobody wakes me up though. I just can sleep. But if I'd go too long, then I don't feel good. If I go too short, I don't feel good. So I've come to realize that my natural time is about seven and a half to eight hours, which is common with people, right? Make sure your room is really dark. Usually it helps if you're colder as well. And uh, one of the things that, that helps with sleep is making sure that you keep a very consistent time. You go to bed and you wake up at the exact same times every single night, every single morning during the week and also during the weekend. So it's very important to keep your circadian cycles exactly the same. If you want to research more about circadian cycles and how to help with them, that is definitely one way to do it. Now, one thing that helps with that as well, everybody seems to want to wake up earlier. It's very simple to wake up earlier. Do you want to know how to do it? You just force yourself to wake up. Let's say it's five o'clock. And you're like, but I'm a night owl. I went to bed at midnight. All you gotta do is force yourself to wake up at five o'clock. You're gonna be more tired that night and you're naturally gonna start to fall asleep. So if you wake up at five o'clock and five o'clock and five o'clock, no matter what, your body will change its circadian cycle and start to make you go to bed earlier. A lot of people think that they're night owls. 
nobody's really a night owl. Very, very few, like one out of a hundred people out of studies they've done and found that, that people are actually night owls. What happens is it's just the problem is that people are around too many screens, too many screens. They are keeping themselves up. If you were to go, okay, when the sun sets, I'm going to read a book. Try to keep yourself awake. If that's what you did every single night, you're going to fall asleep. First thing is sleep. When you wake up, one way that's going to help you when you break your sleep, if you've heard me talk about this before in my podcast, is to walk outside. You go and you look at the blue in the sky because the blue turns off, it turns, we have your receptors in your eyes that tell your brain to stop making melatonin and your brain stops making melatonin, which is the thing that makes you fall asleep so that you wake up earlier. Second thing that you want to do to have more energy, which goes with number one, is to drink some caffeine if that's something that you're into. Now, the secret is to not drink caffeine within an hour of waking up because that's when your cortisol levels are really high. It's best to let your cortisol levels drop and then have caffeine about an hour to two hours after you wake up. So for those of you guys that have a lot of caffeine, uh, this is a secret. Wait about an hour. Along with caffeine is to stop drinking caffeine at about noon if you really want to have good sleep and have more energy. If you want to have a whole lot of energy, you can stop drinking caffeine completely. And eventually after about a month, your body will start creating its own energy. So caffeine is super important in this sense. Also, what type of caffeine you have. It's crazy. I didn't know there's so many different types of ways you can get caffeine. So there's coffee, which you could use, but I'm starting to drink less and less coffee over the past year and a half. And I'm starting to go more towards tea. Tea I drink the most is called yerba mate. People always send me messages saying, Rob, what is that tea that you talk about? It's called yerba mate, Y-E-R-B-A-M-A-T-E. -E. Yerba mate, instead of dehydrating you like coffee does, it actually hydrates you. And it's got a lot more nutrients inside of it as well. It's also got a lot of other stuff. Uh, when I was talking with uh, Dr. Andrew Huberman, who is uh, the neurobiologist out of Stanford, he told me he drinks because there's a lot of extra things that are benefits for your brain of actually taking your mate versus coffee. So tip number two, obviously is caffeine. Tip number three, take some B12 if you want to. Now I'm not a doctor in any sort of way, so don't listen to anything that I say, but I take B12 sometimes throughout the day to get something natural without having this massive spike of caffeine and then a drop after. So B12 is something that definitely helps as well. Super simple. Tip number four, Stop drinking so much alcohol. Actually, if you really want to help yourself out, stop drinking alcohol, period, if it's something that you could do. I very rarely drink alcohol, but this is something super interesting that happened over the past week. Last week was my girlfriend's birthday. We went out a couple times and I didn't even get drunk at all. I just had a couple glasses of wine and I wear this thing on my wrist when I go to sleep. It's called or during the day, mostly throughout the entire day. And then also when I sleep, it's called a whoop and it literally tracks your body the entire day and it tracks your recovery as well. Something really crazy happened. My recovery from having two glasses of wine completely plummeted, even though I got more sleep. Three of the nights we went out and we had a couple glasses of wine, like her friends were in town and then we went to San Antonio where she's from. And then I had two glasses of wine there. My recovery during sleep got destroyed from two glasses of wine. Alcohol stays in your system for up to 80 hours. That's over three days it will affect you. And so I always knew this, but I was like, I'm gonna have a couple glasses of wine, no big deal. So on the days that I did not, the four nights that I did not drink the two glasses of, of wine, my recovery was around 90 to 94%, which means that I woke up and I had energy. I woke up and I felt good. I woke up and I immediately was like, cool, I can work out, no big deal. What happened was, then I look at my whoop and I saw that every day that I drank, the, the, the night that I drank, my sleep was around a 31 to 35%, which means that I didn't feel anywhere near 100% those days. So if you want to have more energy, don't go home and drink a beer. Don't go home and have a glass of wine. For some of you guys are like, but hold on, glasses of wines are actually good for your heart. Well, just so you know, you can go back and listen to my interview that I did with Dr. David Sinclair, who is the head of longevity at Harvard. And he actually says that, uh, I think it's resveterol, I think is what it's called. The antioxidant that they found that's inside of wine, red wine, that they did a whole article and said, oh my gosh, this is so good for you. They've actually found it's very small amounts and it doesn't really do anything for you. That was just people over promoting that wine is good for you. It's not bad, bad, bad for you if you're going to drink just one glass of wine. But what you have to realize is this. The thing about alcohol is that it will help you fall asleep easier, but it will make your sleep worse. And the reason why is because it changes your respiratory rate and it also changes your heart rate. The other thing that was interesting when I checked my recovery, every single night that I drank, my normal resting heart rate is about 50 to 55 beats per minute when I'm sleeping. It was literally up to 60 to 70 beats per minute just when I was sleeping after having alcohol, which means my heart rate went up 20 to 30% while I was sleeping. It's not a good thing to have your heart rate be up while you're sleeping. So if you want to have more energy, 
stop having a glass of alcohol, stop, stop having a glass of wine, stop having a drink when you come home, stop having beer. It is destroying your sleep as well. Number five, put some music in your house. I'm really big. If you ever come over to my house, I'm really big on always playing music. There's always energy and vibration going through my house at all points in time. For me, and I don't know about you guys, like I have favorite songs that just feel like they give me energy. And so one of the hacks that I find with a lot of people that make it super simple is just start putting on music that you like. Don't even put just background music. Put on music that you like throughout your house, while you're driving, while you're at work, wherever you can listen to music. If you have favorite songs, start putting those favorite songs on. Have the vibrations go through your house. We're vibratory beings. We're constantly vibrating at all points in time. That's just what we do. If you look at us, we look like we're solid beings, but really what we are is we're just a vibrating piece of mass with 70 trillion cells that are constantly moving and vibrating as well. And so when you have energy and movement and music going through a room, your body's gonna feel it. Your body's gonna hear it. You're gonna start singing along with it. You're gonna start moving your body a little bit more. So a thing that I recommend is to put music on whenever you can have music on, especially if you can put on your favorite music. Tip number six, Try something called breath work. There are many, many different types of breath work, but this is something that we do with our team every single morning. We have a team meeting every single morning, all of, all hands on, on, on deck, everybody that's on our team comes in and we do breath work every single morning, guaranteed the very first thing that we do. There's multiple different types of breath work you can do. I'll give you three of them that I recommend. We've done all three of them with my team. They enjoy all of them at different times. One of them is called breath of fire. Breath of fire is where you breathe in and breathe out of your nose as fast as you can for as long as you can. And when you don't think you can do it anymore, you just keep doing it. I like to put on music, of course, like I said, and I'll do Breath of Fire. So it's literally. And I'll do it. Sometimes you get some snot flying out of your nose. No big deal. That's just part of the process. That will literally start to invigorate your body. That's Breath of Fire. Another one that, that we do is called Wim Hof. So Wim Hof, but we also do something a little bit separate. Another thing that I learned from Wim Hof, so it's 30 deep breaths in. But then on the 30th breath, you ready? Here's the secret. You breathe in as much as you possibly can. Hold at the top and then force yourself to do as many push-ups as you possibly can before breathing again. This is just something that I do. This is not a recommendation. I don't need you guys passing out and then saying, oh my God, I heard this guy talk about this thing. This is what I do. If you wanna try it, you can try it. What I have found, and here's what's crazy, is if I wanna just do push-ups right now, I can do about 40 push-ups in a row. Here's what's crazy. If I wanna do the breathing exercise and then do my push-ups, I can get about 60, sometimes even more, it without ever breathing again. And the reason why is because I'm over oxygenating my body, which is what your body needs. And also your muscles need a lot of oxygen. So I'm over oxygenating my body and I'm doing these push-ups. I'm doing it to music and I'm pumping them out. And I have literally a song that we listen to every single morning. It's called Strobe by Dead Mouse. We put it on, we just crank it out and we just do the push-up. We do the breathing and then we do the push-ups. Every single time, that's the very first way that I start my morning before I ever have any coffee, any of that stuff. And I can literally feel my body light up with energy and I feel completely different. If I'm ever feeling drained throughout the day, I do one of these as well. And the third one I'm gonna tell you, I don't know what they're called, I just call them skis. That's what I call them because it literally looks like, so for those of you guys that are watching video, for those of you guys that aren't watching video and listening on the podcast, breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth. Breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth. And when you breathe in, your hands go above your head. And when you breathe out, your hands go below, down to your waist. And it's best to stand up and it's and you literally use your entire body as if you're skiing down a mountain and you're putting your, your hands are going up, you're going down. Your hands are going up, going down. When you breathe in, your hands go up. When you breathe out, your, your, your hands go down. Do this for two to three minutes straight with music blaring as well. You can go from no energy to holy sh I have so much energy like that simply because you're using the body the way that the body is made to be used. Super simple. So what was that again? Breath of fire <laughs> or Wim Hof. <sighs> or the skis, all of them are different. I use each of them depending on what I'm doing. Try it out, I promise you, at some point in time, you're gonna get a ton of energy from it. See if it works, see if it works. If you're on your phone, chilling on the couch, scrolling through Instagram, you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta get up and do this thing, but I don't really feel like doing this thing. Force your body to do breath of fire or to do the, the push-ups with a breath hold or to do the skis 
put on some music and I guarantee you it'll just rush energy into your body. Tip number seven, get outside. Take your shoes off, put your feet in the ground and go outside in the sun. For me, every single morning, the very first thing that I do because we have a, a puppy, he likes to pee all over the place. So I gotta get him outside as soon as we wake up in the morning. First thing I do is I put some shorts on, I keep my, my shirt off and I walk outside barefoot and I keep my feet in the grass as long as I possibly can and get as much sun on my body as I possibly can. And I, like I told you, I look up at the sky, the blue in the sky, and I try to get all of the reasons why I should be awake for my body to go, oh yeah, this is the time when Rob should be awake. The sun is now coming up. He's outside, his feet are on the grass, he's getting sun on his skin, he's looking at the blue inside, so that means that the sky is, you know, obviously the, the sun is up, we should stop making melatonin. I'm trying to give my body all of the reasons why I'm supposed to be up right now. Get some sun on your skin. Also with all of the stuff that's been happening with viruses and everything, vitamin D, which is what you get from the sun, is one of the things that kills the viruses the quickest, according to everybody, is the people that have a lot of trouble with it tend to have vitamin D deficiencies, and most people have vitamin D deficiencies. Get outside in the sun more, get as much of your skin to be able to, uh, much sun to be able on your skin as possible, and I guarantee it'll help you. Number eight, exercise in the morning. It is a fact that the more that you exercise, your body will start to create more energy. You know, I look at my, one of my friends, my friend Amy, when she lived here, she doesn't live here anymore. When she lived here in Austin, she was doing like, God, she was doing like five, four to five cycling classes every single day. And everyone was like, how does she have so much freaking energy? She has so much energy, not because she was just blessed with energy. She, must, she has so much energy because she has literally for years told her body, this is what we do, this is what we do, this is what we do. And so when she doesn't go and do four cycling classes and she has a day off, of course she's got so much energy. Of course she can keep going. Of course she wants to party until late night because her body knows it needs to create lots of energy. If you've been in a cycle of not working out, not forcing your body to move, your body's learned that you can make it relearn and make it start to create more energy. So work out in the morning, or at least even if it's not in the morning, just work out at some point in time and force your body to learn it needs to create more energy. Your body is an amazing adaptive piece of machinery. Force it to adapt the way that you want it to adapt. Last but not least is to drink more water and preferably drink spring water like this, if you're looking. Drink spring water, it doesn't have to go through a filter, it's coming straight from the earth. It's also in a plastic, or not in a plastic bottle, in a glass bottle. You can do your own research on why plastic isn't good for you and how plastic raises your estrogen, whether you're male or female. But if it comes from a glass bottle, usually ends up being a lot better for you as well. If it's spring water, it ends up being a lot better for you as well. But just regardless, just drink more water. It's mind blowing to me how little water people drink considering that your body is 60 to 70% water. One of the things that they found is that most people when they're tired, the very first thing you should check is actually if you're dehydrated, because a lot of times the first thing to go down as soon as you're dehydrated is your energy. Your body runs off of water. If you don't feel like you have energy, maybe you should see if you got enough water. Drink a lot more water and your body will actually start to filter out all the toxins and at the same time, it'll run more efficient. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the eight things that you need to stop doing when you wake up. Because as we know, the most important part of your day is usually the morning. And so if we can make sure that our morning is as perfect as we possibly can, it will set up the rest of the day. So without further ado, let's dive into it. The first thing that you need to stop doing when you wake up in the morning is waking up at different times. One of the things that your body wants to do is your body wants to have a routine. Your body wants to have it wants to be in line with circadian cycles. I'm not gonna go into what circadian cycles are, but that's just basically the natural movement of yourself, your body, your sleep, the earth, all of those things. Your body wants a routine, and this includes on the weekends. So there's a lot of people that will email in to me or they'll send me messages on Instagram, and they'll say, Rob, I'm trying to have this great morning routine and it's going really well for me. The only problem is it's it's really hard for me to wake up in the mornings. And I'm like, all right, well, what time do you wake up in the morning? Oh, well, I wake up at 5 a.m., you know, Monday through Friday. Cool, what does your weekend look like? Well, you know, I tend to go out with my friends on the weekends and then I wake up at 9 to 9.30, 10 o'clock sometimes. I'm like, well, the main issue for you is not that you're not able to wake up and to be able to have your morning routines. It's that when you go to bed at five, when you go to bed later, you wake up at 5 a.m. Monday through Friday, but on Saturday and Sunday, you go to bed later. 
even if you don't go out and party and get drunk, but you're waking up at 9, 10 a.m., your body does not have a routine. Your body wants to have a routine that it gets into, that it follows, that makes it easier for it. So the very first thing that I would say is stop waking up at different times. Have a very consistent time because once your body starts to get used to it, after about two weeks, after about three weeks, your body will be in a routine, makes it super easy to wake up. And when you get your body into a routine, even for the people who are like, oh, but I'm a night owl. No, you're not. Uh, it's actually studies that found that night owls don't exist. It's just that the routine of staying up late has been around for so long you think that you're a night owl. Is that when you start forcing yourself to go to bed earlier to wake up later, you come up at this, wake up at the exact same time, your body will start to wake itself up a lot of times even before the alarm. I know every person listening to this has had their body wake up right before the alarm goes off. It's because your body wants to be in a routine. So that's the first thing. The second thing that I want you to stop doing when you wake up in the morning is stop hitting the snooze, right? You have to think of it this way. If you hit the snooze, you're automatically starting your day off with a loss, right? Because when you were a fully conscious being before you went to bed, you said, you know what? I'm going to wake up at 6 a.m. And then you hear the alarm clock go off. And I always say the best salesperson in the entire world is you telling yourself why you need to sleep in. That's the best salesperson in the entire world. We're all really good at sales. We're just really good salespeople for ourselves with excuses. Stop hitting the snooze button. Don't set multiple alarms. I had someone come to my event last week in person and they were like, look, I, these are my three alarms that I set for myself and the motivational thing that I put. It's great to have a motivational thing with each alarm, but why do you have three alarms in the first place? Why don't you just wake up with the first one? Wake up with your first alarm. It sets you off on the wrong foot when you have multiple alarms that you go with or when you're hitting the snooze button because your body gets all confused. Oh, am I asleep? Am I awake? Am I asleep? Am I awake? Stop hitting the snooze button. That is number two. Number three, stop looking at your phone immediately. Stop looking at your phone immediately. In fact, get an alarm. Get a real old school alarm and put it on the other side of the room. Don't put it next to your bed. It's a lot easier to not look at your phone when your phone is not your alarm. It's also a lot easier to not hit the snooze button when you don't have a snooze button that's on your phone and you immediately just walk over to the other side of the room and get that alarm and turn it off and put it on the other side of the room because it's easier to get up when you've already gotten out of bed. You have to get out of bed, you have to go get it. So stop looking at your phone, stop checking social media. Holy crap, stop checking social media. How stressful is that to do that first thing in the morning? That just sets you off down the wrong path. Stop checking your text messages. Stop checking your emails. Don't look at your phone for as long as you possibly can. If you have an hour long morning routine and your alarm goes off at six and at seven o'clock is when your morning routine ends, turn your phone off when you go to bed and do not look at your phone until after you're done with your morning routine. Stop looking at your phone, I promise you, it'll set your day off on such a better foot because all too often, People get their emails, they get their text messages, they get their social media notifications, and all of this anxiety floods in because you're like, holy crap, I've got so much to do and I haven't even gone to the bathroom yet. I haven't even brushed my teeth. I've got so much that I've got to do. Anxiety will just build up inside of you. Stop looking at your phone first thing in the morning. Okay, step number four. The fourth thing I want you to stop doing is stop not making your bed. Start with a win. Make your bed, it takes what? 30 seconds to make your bed? And it may not seem like a big deal. And I completely understand because for the longest time, I thought making my bed was the stupidest thing because I don't do anything else in my room except for sleep. I'm not one of those people who goes in my room and hangs out and works and does phone calls or watches TV or any of that stuff. The only thing that I do in my room is get dressed and sleep. That's the only two things that I do. I sleep first and then I get dressed. I don't get dressed and then sleep. But it may not seem like a big deal. But think about this for a second. If you wake up on your first alarm, if you don't check your phone, if you make your bed, you're starting with three wins before you even brush your teeth. Do you know how much better that makes you feel? What happens is that your brain then releases dopamine. And if you've been listening to my recent episodes, I've been talking about how dopamine is the motivational chemical inside of your brain. So your brain releases dopamine with every single win, which then makes you feel more motivated to go actually get other wins throughout the day. When you wake up and you hit your first alarm and you're, you're good, you're up. That's right there is a win. When you don't check your phone, boom, that's another win. When you make your bed, boom, that's another one. You have three wins before you ever even brush your teeth. That's dopamine, dopamine, dopamine. You feel more motivated to go do something. You're starting your day off on the right foot 
going and taking the action that you need to to go towards the life that you want to. So if you want to start your life off on the right foot, make your bed, get up on the first alarm, do whatever it is that you need to do to not check your phone. So number four is stop not making your bed. Step number five, fifth thing I want you to stop doing, this is gonna piss a lot of people off. I've got a couple of them coming up they are gonna piss you off as well. Stop taking warm showers. There are so many benefits. I've been saying this for years when I first heard this about five years ago and I started doing cold showers. There were, there were very few benefits. It was like, there's benefits to it, but there's a whole lot of pseudoscience behind it. There is so much science as to the benefits of cold showers. Just go to Google and type in benefits of cold showers. And there's so many studies that have been done recently. When you take a cold shower, number one, they suck. Number two, they never stop sucking. Number three, they never get any easier. But number four, that has to do with that. It is another win because it is so hard to not listen to that little voice inside of your head that says, hey man, just, just skip the cold shower today. No one's gonna know, but you hear that little voice inside of your head that says, don't do it. That little voice is the same little voice that says, hey, sleep in a little bit longer. Hey, don't worry about going to the gym today. Hey, eat that pizza. Don't eat the salad. It's that little voice inside of your head. I like to call it the little inner bitch. That's what I call it. It's that little inner bitch coming in and telling you not to do something. And when you can conquer that little voice inside of your head, first thing in the morning, that is your fourth win by the time you get done showering. Think about that. You have started your day off in full on intentional, proactive mode, not putting out fires, not reactive. I'm in control of my life. I'm in control of my day. I'm going to kick today's ass. That's how you're starting your day every single day. If you do this, right? I hate cold showers. I love the way it makes me feel after though. I don't like them when I'm in them. I'm never like, yay, I'm in a cold shower. Yay, I'm about to a cold shower. Don't enjoy them, don't like them, but I do love the benefits of them. The physical benefits are great. You can Google those. I'm most interested in the mental benefits of doing what I don't want to do. Because if I can make myself do what I don't want to do in the morning, it makes it so much easier. It's like knocking over dominoes in the morning. It's just going to continue that momentum throughout the day. So that's number five. The sixth thing I want you to stop doing is stop doing anything that is not for yourself right away. Your morning is your time. Your morning is the time for you to work on yourself, for you to improve, for you to get better. Stop working. Stop getting the kids ready. Now I'm not, you can work later. You can get the kids ready later, but I'm talking about getting up before all of that so that you have some me time so that you can work on yourself because what I find with a lot of people, as we tend to get older, as people tend to have kids, is that we are a lot of times, the reason why people get so stressed out and have so much anxiety a lot of times is because they're trying to give from an empty cup. They're just giving, 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 and they're not receiving. And what I mean by receiving is waking up and filling your own cup. That's your you time. Your time to meditate, your time to read, your time to work out, do yoga journal, whatever it is that fills your cup, that makes you feel good. That is your you time. So stop doing things. That's not for you. You have to see the morning routine, those morning times as absolutely sacred. Those are your you times. So if the kids normally wake up at seven, wake up at six, whatever it is that you got to do and plan yourself to go to bed earlier. One of the things that I love is, is a couple of years ago, Mark Wahlberg, the actor, put out his morning routine and everybody was so blown away because his morning routine starts at like, I think it's like 4 a.m. Actually, I think it's like 3 a.m. If I'm not mistaken, it's it's I think it's yeah, I think it's 3 a.m. At 3 a.m. is when it when it, uh, you know, his his morning routine starts. So he gets up at 3 a.m. and he follows this whole morning routine. And everyone's like, why would you wake up at 3 a.m.? I went to an event. I'm part of a mastermind and he came and spoke at the mastermind and he was talking about his morning routine and how he gets up so early and everyone's like, Oh my God, I can never get up that early. The secret to his morning routine is that his kids go to bed at 7:30, And so when his kids go to bed and they're asleep, he just goes to sleep right after them. And so it's like, Oh my God, he wakes up so early. He also goes to bed so early. So he goes to bed at 8 AM or I'm sorry, 8 PM. So he goes to bed at 8 PM. He wakes up at three, that's seven hours of sleep. That's what he feels like he needs. So you can wake up earlier if you just go to bed earlier. So whatever it is that you want to create for your morning routine, whatever it is that you want it to look like, just plan ahead. Just be intentional. That's all you got to do. So that is the sixth thing to stop doing. Stop doing anything that is not for yourself right away. That's what you need to make sure. 
Don't do anything for anybody else. Fill your cup right away. Speaking of filling cups, number seven is stop drinking coffee right away. Oh, I told you there's going to be some that were going to piss you guys off, right? Stop drinking coffee right away. Why? There's a lot of studies that have found that you should wait at least an hour before you have any coffee. And the reason why, one of the main reasons why, is because your cortisol levels, which are your stress hormones, are at their absolute highest throughout the day when you wake up. Cortisol is usually what wakes people up. And so I don't know if you've ever, I feel it all the time. The moment that I wake up, immediately it's like flooded with stress. Five out of seven days, I get that. It's like I feel the stress immediately and it's like anxious thoughts, it's stressful thoughts. The worst thing that you could do at that time is give yourself some freaking coffee because that's just going to flood you with more stress and anxiety and get your cortisol levels to go higher. So usually what you should do is you should wait about an hour at least before you have coffee. The reason why, it allows your stress hormones to go down. It allows your body to calm down. The first thing that you should do is actually more than anything else is drink water and not drink coffee because you usually lose at least a liter of water every single day when you go to bed. Throughout your sleeping, you lose a liter of water. So what do you do? Start your day off with warm water, lemon, and sea salt. You need to hydrate more than anything else. Because if you wake up, think about this. If you, hyd if you don't hydrate, you wake up, your stress levels are at the highest that they're ever going to be throughout the day, and you add caffeine to that. And at the same time, you're drinking coffee, which is you know, dehydrating you. You're basically starting off really in a really bad position. But when you wake up, you drink a whole lot of water with lemon and sea salt in it. It allows your body to take all of that, to rehydrate itself. And then about an hour later after your cortisol levels drop, it allows your body to then be able to have the caffeine. There's a lot of studies that show, you can Google it if you want to, that if you wait an hour, the caffeine actually is much more, helps you be much more productive if you have ca caffeine an hour after you wake up versus immediately after you wake up. So the seventh thing to stop doing when you wake up in the morning, sorry everybody, stop drinking coffee right away you can drink it later and number eight stop eating stop eating as soon as you wake up in the morning try something called intermittent fasting uh why is that you guys probably know there's a million studies of it coming out with that but if you go back and listen to my podcast i had dr david sinclair on my podcast he is the head of harvard's anti-aging and uh he says eat one less meal per day and so there's so many benefits of skipping a meal. And since you've already fasted for eight hours, seven, eight hours, because you were asleep for seven to eight hours, and if you don't eat for an hour or two hours before you go to bed, you're fasting, you're about on a 10 hour fast. Just skip your breakfast and then you can go and you can have your lunch. There's so many studies on how intermittent fasting helps you live longer, helps you be healthier, helps you obviously reduce your caloric intake. And he said one of the secrets, if you just want to live longer, just skip a meal every single day. And the easiest one to skip is breakfast. And what happens is if you start to read some articles and start to watch some YouTube videos on fasting, is it, it takes about three days for your body to get used to this. So if you've been eating breakfast immediately when you wake up or your body's used to it, you will feel the first three days really, really hungry. But that's the reason, the reason why is because your body releases something called, I think it's called gremin. It sounds like gremlin, whatever it is. Uh, and it releases this and that is the hunger a uh, hormone that's released and the chemical that's released that tells your body when to eat. After about three days of not eating at the same time, so you decided, like, so you decided to skip breakfast. Day four, you're not really going to want your breakfast anymore. You're not really going to be that hungry. So I recommend try it out. Skip it. If you want to learn more about intermittent fasting and how it helps you live longer, how it helps you be healthier, you can go back to my podcast episode with Dr. David Sinclair and you can learn about it. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Nobody wants to take a cold shower. Cold showers are not fun. Listening to a podcast. This is a pretty good one. I would recommend this one. Don't have caffeine for an hour after waking up. Now, some of you guys are like, holy crap, I don't know if I could do that. 